Hello, everyone. I hope you're getting a great day. We are going to talk a little today about how we can program a controlled drone with Azure OpenAI. But before we start and introduce myself, let's review uh, our code of conduct. This is basically common sense. We try to have a great moment there all together. And the idea is that let's be friendly and patient, have a respectful environment, and hey, let's have a good time learning here. Important also that this video is going to be recorded. So the record is going to be available in 24 to 48. Watching the comments. So if you have any comments, I am watching the comments there. If you see me watching there, that's me. Uh, and hey, let me know where are you joining today because I really want to see, I see a lot of names here, Ron, Danny, Richard, Rebecca, Sean, Dave, Angela. I will try to put everyone here, but I'm having a weird day with my computer. So please bear with me to try to see if we can get until the end of the presentation. Right now, I am trying literally to share my screen. And let's see if it's going to show the, the screen. I have my slides and everything ready to, to start. OK, it should be showing the screen anytime soon. Not yet. Let me remove it and add it again, just in case. OK, I see Daniel for Corpus Christi, Texas. There it is. That's my screen. And please let me know if I have any issues with the audio. As I said, today is a weird day here with my, my machine. But hey, let's, let's start. Let's see how we can do it. So first of all, what are we going to see today? I'm going to, we are going to code from scratch, uh, basically an SDK to control a drone with Python. And then we are going to see how we can use Azure OpenAI or ChatGPT or OpenAI. We are going to see how you can use these GPT models to help us get uh, to help us control the drone. I'm going to be a little fast at the beginning because we lost a couple of minutes due to my problems. And hey, sorry for the bad jokes, sorry for the bad demos and everything else. So this is the device that I am planning to use. It's called DZI Telo. It's not a professional drone. It's literally a toy. I have it here. Let me show it to you here. So I have it here. We are going to make it fly later. And the idea is that I, I like it because even if it's not a professional one, it's not very, very expensive. So we are not talking about thousands of dollars. This is cheaper than that. But also, it has kind of a nice set of features. So decent camera, 720p if we want to do computer vision. I did a couple of sessions about that. Also, automatically take off and landing, 10 minutes battery flight, which is kind of nice. And then it automatically uh, shoot down when it's low on battery. I'm sorry, uh, land when it's low on battery and a couple of things. And the first time that I see this drone was in a kit competition. And the kids were basically using Scratch to program the drone. To, and they use, you know, Scratch is a programming environment where you connect blocks. And they basically connect the blocks and say, OK, take off, fly up, fly down. And I love it. And I see the, the drone, as I say, I remember, it's, it's a toy. It's a super nice toy. And I saw the drone and I say, hey, if they are doing this with the Scratch, there may be an SDK for the drone. But no, there is no official SDK. What you can find somewhere here deep on the internet is a PDF that basically explains how we can connect to the drone and how we can interact with the drone. The idea is that the drone is going to, when you, we turn on the drone, is going to give us access to a Wi-Fi network and we, we connect to the network, we can open three ports using UDP. UDP is not the best communication protocol ever. It's it's a hard one, but we can open three ports, one to send commands, the other to read information from the drone, and the third port is to access to the camera. And then we also have a list in this PDF, we also have a list of commands that we can send to the drone. An example, take off, do a flip, move right, move left, move up, 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, or something like this. And it's it's kind of nice. It's kind of work. But I needed to create it everything from scratch. So this is what I have today. I have my PC here. 
my work PC that is going to be connected via wireless to the drone, and they am connected via my network cable to the router. And I basically show you this because you are going to see me doing this several times. So, okay, it's still, in, it's still installing Anaconda. I have a problem with Python today. Somehow I lost my Anaconda environment, but I want to show you something different. I want to show you that I am going to connect to the drone using this command here. So don't care about this. Let's split the tab. I know my drone when I turn on the drone. Let's CLS this. CLS this. Let's make a little bigger, make a little bigger. So when I turn on the drone, you're not going to see this. It's very small, but the drone is turned on right now. Okay, not even. Okay, this battery should be there. Have a backup battery just in case. So I turn on the drone, and when the drone is turned on, I will see the drone in the wireless network here. So if I go to my Windows network, available network, and wireless, which we will see the drone anytime soon. We should see here Telo. Okay, it's not even working the wireless. As I said, I don't know what's happened today with my machine. It's not a great day. One more time, turning on the drone. Okay, sorry about that. Plan B, I have another drone. Let me go get the backup drone. So I have here a second one, just in case. The first one not working. So let's switch to the second one and see if this one Can start. Okay, we should see the the Wi-Fi anytime soon. So if I go here, there it is. We see here. Sorry about that. That's happened. This is a toy. But we have here the second drone, and this is Telo 5 DC. So we have the name here. And I have two options here. I can connect to the drone using my uh using Windows, but Windows will connect to the drone and it will automatically disconnect and I will have to connect again because it doesn't give me uh, internet access. So I will have to connect again and again and again. What I want to do right now is I want to connect to the drone. So C5DCB8A. So five, let me copy this one here. What I need to do is use a command five, C V eight. Sorry, I forget the name. DC. So I'm going to use this command here. Net at S8 connected. And after a couple of seconds, we can see here in reply that the drone is connected. So I am going to do this. Remember, this is a toy. It's going to disconnect from time to time. This happens. So hey, I have it up and running. I have connected. Let me go back to the slides, and then we can start to come. So when, when I know this, when I know how to connect, and I see a question here, how many wafers I have at home? Several. <laughs> Let's write a super quick, a super quick program to connect to the drone. And this is the part that I hope that Let's see if Anaconda is still installing. Why? OK, so let's hope. Let's go for the best. Let's go for, for a standard <clears throat> for a standard Python environment. I, use, I like to use Anaconda, but let's use another one. So let's create a file here. 
By the way, this is all code. Let's start to add some code. By the way, please let me know if you can see the the, the code or I need to make a little to use Python. So if I do the wrong one, is the font good enough or I make I make it make it so I make a little bigger. So something like this. How about that? And changing to this layout. Okay, so a couple of questions here. Does this work with other DJI drones? No, as far as I understand. Uh, John is asking, I'm sorry, John, no. Jay is asking about that. Then there is asking that uh, what if connection is lost in flight? Usually, usually it will land automatically. Then. Okay. And the font is right. So, yes. So, a very basic program. I'm going to use three libraries socket, time, and threading. That's kind of the, the idea. And I'm going to use thread to basically, you remember that I told you that I opened three ports to work with the drone. So the idea is that I am going to open these ports in different threads. So I don't have to, I don't have to block my application. And this is how it's going to work. So later in my code, I am going to open a client socket. In this one, please don't do this at home. I am going to have an eternal while loop that is going to read all the time chunks of 1024 bytes. And this is going to be the response. This is where I am going to read the data. When I send the command, the only response that I have from the drone is OK or error. An example, when I say take off or land. And this is the client that I'm going to use this. And I have another one very similar, which is basically going to read chunks of 256 bytes. And this is going to read the state of the drone. This is where I am going to read how much battery do I have in the drone, how, what is the altitude. The drone has a vector, so has an accelerometer, so I can see where it's moving. All of this is going to be here. And in example, I know that in this super long and weird ride, the IT21, in the 21st position, is the battery value. So super simple way <coughs> to, to get info from the drone, to send info to the drone, to send commands. Again, a very simple approach. I am going to get a timestamp basically current time. Using the client socket, I am going to convert the command, which is a text, to UTF-8. And with the address that I know, remember, I did the ping, so I know my address. I am going to send the command. And then a super simple way to control a five seconds timeout. If I don't have a response that I read before, I am going to assume that there is no timeout there. Timeout there. I'm sorry, it's timeout and don't have anything there. I have a couple of kind of overloads here. I know that we don't have overloads here in Python, but that's basically it. And this is the kind of the important part. This is how easy we can connect to the drone. I know my IP. I know the ports. Remember, we have the PDF. By the way, I'm going to share all of the code later so you can give it a try. And then I'm going to open one socket, two sockets with different ports to basically send command and read the state. And I only need to add 10 more lines of code to make it work. So basically, the next step, the final step here is, OK, I have my drone. I have the connection. I can send commands. I can read commands. I can read information from the drone. Sorry. I am going to open these two eternal loops in different threads so I can have access to this info all the time. And that's it. 92 lines and minus a couple of comments, and I can have I am ready to work with the drone. So the first app that I can create here, it's basically, remember, that I read the battery before. So I'm going to send the battery. This is important. The first command that we need to send to the drone when we are working in this non-official SDK mode is the string command. And then in the PDF, there is a value that I can, that I can use this battery, and it's going to read and share the battery. Slide, sleep five seconds and print the button. So let's give this one a try. Copy path. Uh, let's open a terminal. And where I am? OK, I don't have Python ready. So let's use this one. Yes. Let's give the try to this one. So CD event today is 23.07. Okay, there I am, CLS. 
So this is my file, demo file that I just created. Let's do a Python demo.pi. And if I am connected, let me double check if I am connected. This is the moment that I need to go back to my console and see, OK, I'm not connected. So turning on the drone, there it is. Oh, not this one, sorry, the other one. So turning on the drone, there it is. Sending the command to connect. And when I have the request I'm out connected. Okay, not yet. Our time. There it is, I'm connected. So I can run this Python file right now. It's going to take a couple of seconds, not doing anything. Yes, open the network, allow access. And I have zero battery, which is not good at all. Let's change something here so you can see that I am really using the drone. Let's go to the top of the code. And when I get the values, let's print the list of values. And let's change here the sleep to 25 seconds. With all of this, if I am still connected, yes. When I run this one, you will see here that I have a lot of values. And if I start to move the drone around, you can probably see how the strings are moving because I am going to take a look, a deeper look right now, what are the information that we have right now in the drone. So let me lose this one here. So it's charging. I hope it's charging. It should be charging. And once it's finished, let's take a look. There are some values like pitch, roll, and yaw, which is basically a three axis that we have here. Also the vector, that the vector and the three coordinates, x, y, and c. And then we have more info here, like the temperature right now, 81 to 84, low and high Fahrenheit degrees. This is the accelerometer values. This is the one that changed when I move the drone around. This is the one that we, we have. We have a barometer. And somewhere here, it's also the battery. Where's the battery? Here, which is 87. And we can see here that I also have, oh, let me move my, let me move my screen here. So you can see here the battery, which is 87. And I have the battery 87 selected here. So again, 10 minutes, I am connected to the drone. I am sending commands, reading information, and that's it. In a live audience, this is the moment that I will make the drone fly. I will put it in the table and make it fly. I will wait to make it fly a little. I can do more stuff here. I can do plenty, plenty of other things here. I can, in example, create a new one to access to the camera to the drone. Today, I'm not going to use the camera. But because I literally don't know if I have TensorFlow installed, I don't think so. So camera.pi, so the general code of the camera is this one literally the same code, but I am going to use OpenCV to access the camera. And why I'm going to use OpenCV? Because let's go a little forward to the, to the slides. Remember that I shared that we can access the camera via UDP. So if I know the IP of my drone and I know the port, which is 11,111, I can access. So I give it a try a couple of times to access the drone camera and uh, with a couple of tools and it didn't work, but but accessing the camera with OpenCV, it's super easy. The only thing that I need to do is once I have the same code that I have here, I can go here, start the connection to the drone, which is the one that we've seen before, send control command command, and then I need to send a new command, which is stream on, start the streaming. So I want the, the drone to start the camera. And then what I need to do, what I can do is this. I am going to open, I am going to create a new video capture element, which is this cap, the capture element, in the UDP address that I know from the drone. And then I can ask for this capture element, give me a frame, give me a frame, give me a frame. And I will see in real time the frames of the drone, of the camera drone. So let me do here. Uh, show you how this should work. Again, I am going to use the 
send command to read the battery values kind of uh, as an information. I want to have kind of a ping here, and I want to know how much battery that I have. And I have an eternal loop, which basically it's say, hey, give me a frame. I'm going to resize the frame to 64 and 480 as an image. And then I have a window as part of OpenCV that is going to show the camera with this title. So this image is the camera. This is the moment, and you can see other videos, and I will share more info that we can start to do machine learning. I'm sorry, computer vision. We can analyze the frame, analyze the image, and detect something, and make it on one with the tech, move up, down, and more. Not going to do this today, but I just want to show you how easy is this. The next step here, once we have the camera, and this is important, I learned this in the hard way. When I finish, when I stop the execution, I need to send the command, which is a stream off. And by the way, to I didn't talk about this. To leave the eternal loop, if I press the letter Q, is going to is going to show the is, I'm sorry, it's going to show, it's going to exit the loop and then it's going to, to delete this. So I don't know if I have here terminal. I don't think I have OpenCV up and running. Uh, uh, let's give it a try. Python camera.pi. Let me show you that this is the file that we have right now. As I said, I'm still installing Anaconda. Oh my God, finally gets there, finish, perfect. Okay, we can give it a try. No, I don't want Anaconda. We can give it a try later. Okay, so here I have my two files, camera and demo. And let's see if we can run the camera. I don't think I have uh, here the camera working. So let me see if I am still connected. Otherwise, no, not connected. I need to connect again. So picking up the drone. By the way, I'm going to make the drone fly later. I save the fly demos to the end because I want to basically make it happen fast. So it's turning on. There it is, connecting. And once I have the time out, not yet, one more time. OK, there it is, reply, working. So this is kind of nice. And if I run the camera, OK, no, I don't have OpenCVs. So I'm going to show the camera demo later, and in order to show the camera later, let me see if I remember uh, the pip install to take some time. Right. OK, so no pip, pip three, maybe. I hate having, that's why I love, I love Anaconda. OK. I will deal with this later, not right now. I will go to show you the camera demo later. So once we have this, and remember, this is the moment that I can start to use my commands to make the drone fly. And I can send commands. I can write here an example if I want to do the drone do something. I want to, I can send here, send. Command, let me see the, the name. So send command. I can say, if I want to make the drone in example, let's give this uh, some space. I can send command for takeoff. So this will, yep, this will make the drone take off. Then if I want to make the drone, uh, I don't know, uh, flip right, I can say send command. Deep right, which I don't remember if I'm showing like this. Or if I want to make the drone move left, I will say if move 30. It's going to move uh, move L30. I think that these are the comments. I can't remember. But I can use this command to make the drone do something, to fly, to make like this, to, to do something. And this is the moment that instead of learning all of the commands and doing my own flight flight, I will start to think, hey, I may use a GPT model. I may use Azure OpenAI, an example, or ChatGPT to make the drone fly. And let me show you how we can use this. Before doing this, let me give you a little, little overview of the stuff that we can do.
Okay, not going to do the camera demos. Sorry about that. If we have time at the end, I am going to make it happen. And hey, I have someone from New Zealand. Bam. Pleasure to have you here. So let me minimize this. I will assume that everybody knows the, that we are living an amazing AI moment right now. This is why you're probably here, because we have the AI skills uh, challenge, and these are amazing. And hey, we are super lucky at Microsoft because we have this amazing partnership and agreement with OpenAI that allows us to have access to a set of models that they have created, GPT 3.5, which is ChatGPT, the one that you have in ChatGPT right now, GPT 4, the one that you have access if you are in GPT, ChatGPT Plus, or if you're using the Bing Chat, in example. So we can do text activities, conversation, or working with text. We can work with code, the stuff that we see, in example, in GitHub Copilot, with the model that is trained to help us with code, with code main codex. And then we have images with DALI 2, DALI 2, sorry, getting my Spanish <laughs> prompts there. So at the end of the day, what is important here is that for each one of these models, for each one of these scenarios that we want to do, generate code, help with completion of the code, generate an image, having a conversation, we need to understand how we can prompt in the right way. And this is what I am going to do today. I'm going to give you a simple example of the a way we can do prompting in this scenario to basically generate code to fly the drone. And we are going to my, try to make the drone fly. So before going there, let's do a little, a little overview of prompt engineering. So this is Azure AI. If you want to one of the, yes, I have, I already have Anaconda. So if you want to use the GPT models, you can, I am going to do my demos using Azure OpenAI. And here I have access to a couple of scenarios. I can test my models for chat for completions, or for image generation. I'm going to do completions. And I have two models created here, GPT from 3.5 Turbo and DaVinci 02. DaVinci is a, an, an older GPT model. And then I have a problem that I want to use, basically, I like to use to show how we can learn about prompting. Let me go back here to my demos. And not here, not here. Uh, not here. There it is. So I will I will use this question, a very simple question, which is basically and basically said this. Janet has uh, have some dogs. She lives in a farm, in example, and the dogs lays sixteen eggs per day. She eats three for breakfast, bakes muffin for her friends with four, and she sells the others. Uh, two per uh, two dollars each uh, in the market. How much money does she make at the end of the day? So, this is a very simple question. This is a math question, and I know that if I use this question and I use this GPT-4 model in example, and I ask the question, and you see here that I have a format with question and answer. So this is my question. Please complete and give me an answer. It's going to work correctly. But if we use an older model like DaVinci O2. And I change a couple of values here in the parameter. This is also nice to understand when we are using these models and we are using APIs and we want to learn more because I can change here, in example, the temperature. And the temperature is kind of how creative this model is going to be. So I'm going to go for one, be super creative, or I am going to go for no creativity at all. In this scenario, I am going to say, OK, I don't want any creativity. I want you to just solve the, the problem. So if I ask DaVinci O2 to solve this problem, I will click on Generate. We are going to see that mm, this is not right. These models said that, hey, Janet makes $14 at the power market every day. And that's not correct. This is not the, the right answer. The right answer is 18. So how we can solve this? And by the way, if we want to test this in GPT-4, in example, Using ChatGPT, it's going to do everything. It's going to explain it step by step. Remember, this is a much powerful uh, model. And yes, we have the right answer here, which is $18 per day. But we are not there yet here. However, however, using a little of prompt 
engineering, <laughs> a little of prompt knowledge, we can make this happen here with this model. And why this is important? Because these models, there are a couple of things that we need to be aware of. GPT-4 is amazing, uh, but it's a little more expensive than this older model. So, hey, if we want to take care of the cost, we can see which is the best model for our scenario. Other one is that this model is super fast, super, super fast. GPT-4 is amazing, but it's a little slower than this. So there are a couple of things that we need to learn in order to choose the right model. So I am going to use a technique, a technique, sorry, and it's called fuel shot learning, which basically, instead of asking the question directly to the model, I am going to say to the model, okay, there are three cars. I am going to give uh, the model a couple of examples here. So and each example is going to, going to have this separator, the stop sequence. So you see here that I have one question, and then I have the three lines there, then the other. And the third one is, hey, question, if there are three cars in the parking lot and two more arrive, how many cars we have in the parking lot? And I'm going to say in the answer, OK, this is how I solve this. I have three, two more, three plus two, five cars. This is great. Take a look at the second one. The second one is interesting. I made a typo here. Here, when I am talking about selling, buying and selling magic cards, it should say 1,000. However, when I type this, I type it wrong. How And the model will understand that this 1,000 is this 1,000. So 1,000, sorry, is going to understand this. The third one is even a little more tricky because I am talking about working with money, but I not only use numbers here, I use words to describe the numbers. So I have a $20 bill right. Then I, I, I buy a couple of skill guns for $2 each using numbers again. And then I also give the answer. So these are three examples of how we can do, how we can do few shot learning to help me complete, use a model like this to complete. So if at the end I ask the question again about Xanax and the dots, let's see what's happened. Okay, I hope it, let me make it bigger. Now we have the right answers. Well, we have $18 per day. But again, I didn't change the model. I didn't upgrade to a bigger one. I did a couple of prompt engineering. I use few shot learning to basically solve the problem. And you can and you can see here that the main idea is that, hey, now, I'm sorry, now is not solving the problem, is kind of solving the problem step by step. And now it gets to the right value. And I can do something similar here if I want to fly my drone. I know that if I want to fly my drone, I don't care about all of the code that we have from line 92 to the top. That doesn't make sense. I mean, the model doesn't make sense. But I can go and give the model something like this. Let me, let me give you here this example. So if I go back here to ChatGPT, an example, let's add a new chat. And I am going to show you this in ChatGPT and later on, on Azure. That's the idea. But this is the prompt that I have, and I'm still generating. So I am going to say, hey, use this Python code as reference. I will have a code start and code at the end. So, and I will send, OK, send a command, take off, flip the drone, move up, move down, a couple more that I have here. And in example, I show how you can flip the drone left. I didn't say how you can do it right, but the model will generate code and we'll understand that flip L going to the left, flip right is flip L. Same how we can move the drone up or left. So I have up five, left five. It will assume that we have right and we have down for this. Same with rotate. I have rotate clockwise 90 degrees and the end one is land. So at the end of this prompt, I am going to ask the code to, okay, Generate code to take off, flip right, move down, and land. Let's take a look how this works. It generates a Python code, and hey, it's kind of nice. It's going to do the takeoff, do the flip right, and remember, we didn't teach flip right. This is the magic of the GPT models, and they are amazing. Same with down. I, remember, I don't remember if we say <laughs> down or not, and then land, which is super cool and super great. So right now, 
we have kind of everything ready if we want here to make it work, but I am not planning to do this. I don't want to use GPT. I want to use other models. I want to use a full Python code. But what I like about GPT, if I'd said, okay, this is good enough, but I know my drone. And I know that I need to wait five seconds between commands because uh, if I send all of these commands, one uh, and, and the other is not going to work. Remember UDP and this kind of thing. So add the five seconds delay between commands will generate the code again. And the main difference here is that it will import time, the library to manage time. And after each command is going to do a five second delay, five second delay, five second delay, which is great, is amazing. And by the way, I can do this literally here. I can go back here to my model. Let's use GPT 3.5 just in case. Paste the code that I want, and I want to do generate. So this is what I am going to have if I am using this. So it's going to generate the code. It's giving me a little more extra info here. I need to work a little on my prompt. But you can see here that it's, again, take off, flip right, down 30, and land. I have everything here. So how I do this if I want to if I want to use my code, if I want to do this from Python, in example? So there are several ways that I can do this. There's an official SDK that we can use to, to access the, the code. And it's super amazing. We have an Azure OpenAI SDK. Once you have created your services, you can you have an endpoint, you have your keys, you have everything. Or, and this is the one that I like. We can use, let me go here, oh, let, let's create from scratch. Or we can use a semantic kernel, which is very similar. It's a library very similar to LangChange, which is basically a library to interact with services and allows us to create kind of a, kind of a, a change of actions. That there, semantic kernel is per se a full topic to talk. But what I like is I can write the code, in example, to use Azure OpenAI. And it will automatically also later help me to move to open AI services or other way, open AI API, sorry, or in the other direction, using open AI and then going to Azure Open AI. And what I have here. So here I have a code, very simple code. Let me change the view so you can. Uh, so Vivek is asking, will you be sending how to code this? I'm going to share all the code later. In the slides, so there is a simple URL that you can access this. So this is how Azure, I'm sorry, the semantic kernel works. And by the way, semantic kernel works in Python or .NET. There are several ways where you can use this. I have a simple function here that is going to say generate commands for the drone, and we have a user input, and the user input it will be natural language, something like this: take off the drone, flip right, move cent 30 centimeters, and land. That's basically what I want to do. So if I don't have an input, I will use this at the default. So then I am going to create a kernel. I'm going to create the kernel initially with OpenAI, switch later to Azure OpenAI. So it's, again, it's literally the same code. You only need to create a new connector here, OpenAI or Azure OpenAI. And there is a full section about how we can read your keys from .NET F. So I have here my APIs and everything. And hey, I am going to use DaVinci here, the compression service, and then I'm going to use the skills. And this is a super important concept that we have here. I can do a simple call to the API with a prompt, and I have the response. But here, we have the, the chance to work with the skills. And I, what I like about the skills, and the skills have two parts. We have a configuration file, which basically defines the skills. So this is a kind of a name. This is a skill that is going to generate commands to control my drone. I will define here, remember what we talk, the amount of tokens, the temperature that I want to use, and more. And then my skill will have parameters, input parameters in example, which is, in this case, the input for the command, for the command that I want to send to the drone. And then I have the prompt. This is the prompt. This is literally what we see before. Use this Python code as reference, do everything, da, 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 and generate the Python code using the input. So this is what we have right now. This is the skill that we have right now to do this. 
if I go back to, I'm sorry, close the wrong file. Uh, if I go back here, this kernel is going to use that skill and it's going to generate the function that I need. So I can take a look at this. Let's go for demo and I will do drone 70. This is all the code that we have to control our drone and everything. Everything is here. This is all we've seen, literally seen. But let's make the drone fly. So now do code 71. And here, what I am going to do, I am going to import the drone file that I have there. I'm going to input an action for the for the drone. And then I am going to generate the, the code. And if I have the code generated, I'm going to show the code. I will say yes, no. And if I say yes, save the code to the file and then use exec, which is basically, OK, read the file and exec that, that, that file. Let's give it a try. And to give it a try, let me comment all of this. I don't need. And let's run this demo. So let me copy this path and go for view terminal. And by the way, sorry for opening the terminal like this. It's not working my, my standard way. So here I am. And if I do demo, oh, sorry. Demo.pi, the one that that's created. So, oh, I don't have semantic kernel installed here. OK, sorry about that. I need to install semantic kernel. This is because I lost all of my Okay, so let me search for semantic kernel Python package in the meantime. Uh, okay. I think this is it. Oh, I hate. Why I can't install? Okay. Let me take a second and figure out why I can't install in Semantic Car. In the meantime, I can literally do this on Anaconda, which is my happy place to do this. So let's go Anaconda PowerShell prompt. And in the meantime, I will read a couple of questions. So it's creating base Python pip install semantic kernel. Let's give it a try here. And while it's installing, let me see the comments. OK, it's installing. Perfect. Everything is there. Let me copy again this path. And go back here to the command Anaconda to see when it's back. OK, asking for the code. Yes, the code. Let's give this a couple of seconds to install. So all of the resources are here. So first, remember, we are running this amazing iSkill challenge. So you can access the iSkill challenge here. Sorry. So you can access the iSkill challenge here Leave in the comments. And if you want to see everything that is related to the drone, I have it here. where you can find everything. And by the way, this one will show you. Let me copy this one and open it here while I'm installing. This one will show you a lot, a lot of stuff. I have here basically tons of posts around how you can do the Python samples. Drone world, hello world, connecting to the Wi-Fi, connect to tip, a couple of tips, reading data, sending everything that we did today, plus the OpenCV demos are already defined here. So let's go back here. Let's see if we can make. OK, so we should have this up and running. And uh, if I copy again the path in this one, I will say. OK, let's do Python demo. 
So this one will ask for ask for my actions. Let's see what we have. And for action for the run, let's go for the default. So it's going to do take off, flip, make move down, and everything. So it's already here. Execute the command drones. Let's go yes. Because I don't have the first part, it's not going to work right now. But hey, you got the idea. And if we want to see what this one is doing, it's basically, uh, yes, it's basically, let me close this one. It's basically saving the demo. Oh, I think it's in this one, saving the commands here, and then it's going to make it work. So by terminal, let me uncomment this. Let's give it a try. Let's make it fly. Let's see if this one can work. So, to make this one work, let me start my demo camera. Okay, so. Uh, we have now 20, 21. So, this is the demo camera. Start. That's the back end. It's not, doesn't have any light. So let me turn on the big lamp there. Okay. And let's connect and make the drone fly. This is going to be kind of fun. And oh, by the way, I think I can minimize this and add an extra camera. Okay, not today. It's really a tricky day to, to make anything. But I'm going to turn on the drone. There it is, and let's connect the drone again. Wait a couple of seconds, and let's make the drone fly. I will also do the big camera so you can take a look at the drone in the in the back. So it's not connected yet. One more time. Shoot, there it is, connected. So let's go here. PLS, there it is. I put the drone in the back and let's make it fly. Demo. Okay, yes, enable the network, allow access. Battery zero, that's not correct. Still connected. And let me also open the Second camera, it's taking the time to connect, but let's wait for it. Okay, action for the drones. I don't have action for the drone. I just want the drone to move. So it's generating. You want to access? Yes. Okay, executing the drone is not doing anything. Okay, what's happened here? I am connected. Yes, take off, take off. Oh. Let me go back here and take a look at the code. Sorry about that. Hey, this is demo effect. This is what's happening when we have it here. So uh, it's take off, send command, send command. So it should take off one more time. Demo.pi. Battery 78. OK, now it seems it's connected. Actions, the default ones. And oh my god, this drone is not flying. Why is happening this? Okay. Plan B, let's switch to the previous drone, the one that I've been doing the the demos, and let's see if this one, the, the first one, it's flying. Sorry about this. This is what's happening in demo lives, in live demo, sorry, is that hey, sometimes this happens. So let me go back here to my notes. Uh, let's copy this one. So this should be the, say, the new drone. Let me turn on the drone. There it is. Give me the same IP, so we are fine there. There it is, connected. 
Leave the drone there. CLS here, change the camera view to have a better view there. Let me also add this one here. And if I do demo to connect, generate the code, battery, 80%, fine. The post actions. Execute the code, yeah. So it's flying. It should, okay. Sorry about that. That's happening with the drone. And the problem here is that if you take a look, it's not adding the five seconds uh, delay between commands. So it sent all of the commands one by one, and it automatically went down when it didn't find anything. So let's fix that one. But either, I, by the way, did you manage to catch it? It was kind of good enough. Let's solve this in doing a little more live coding. And let's do the way to solve this is let's go to the skill. I'm sorry, to the prompt. And generate code to follow these orders and a five second delay between commands. So it's literally the same code, but I am going to share, I'm going to ask to add a five second delay. So I am going to run again. Less battery, 59%. Okay, action for the drone. Let's go for the fault. Let's change the camera. So you can have a better look. There is the, the okay, take a look here. We have the time slip five seconds between one and, and the other. Flying again. One, two, three. Did the flip, need to move down a little, and it's going to fly, it's going to land somewhere. Oh, almost there. So, hey, this is kind of the idea using Azure OpenAI, using everything that, that we've seen, how to fly and connect to the drone. Sorry for the technical issues, really sorry. <laughs> how to connect to the drone, how to use Azure OpenAI to generate code. Oh my God, this light is so bright. Let me turn on the, the light. Okay, better there. Uh, generate the code. You can download everything here. You can download all of the resource. Super, super, super quick recap of what we did. Drone SDK. We write the drone SDK from scratch. Read a little about this telemetry, how to send information, read information. Didn't show the camera, but spend the last time how to use GPT models to generate the fire plan. And hey, it kind of work. It's kind of make what we wanted to, to make. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me go here. If you want to have fun, this is a great moment. Again, uh, Askia, if you can share the links for the, for the feedback, this is the moment to, to get some feedback. Please let us know uh, what do you think and what what else do you want to do? I can do a full session if someone wants around computer vision, how we can use computer vision to detect faces, to detect objects, to follow something so the drone can fly somewhere. When we add computer vision, we can say something like, hey, drone, fly until you find the chair. And let me know when you find the chair, because GPT will help us to get there. So this is kind of nice. These are the slides. Uh, these are the code. Um, please also. Join our join our connection. Okay, let me see a couple of questions here that I have. Alejandro, I will say it's Alejandro Rock, best name ever. Ask a, ask a question around accessing, uh, getting access to Azure OpenAI. There is a queue there. Uh, it's a long queue. Uh, we can wait. Uh, let's chat chat later. Sorry about see how we can help, but. Mm, we can't make something happen. So it's just it's just waiting, waiting there. In the meantime, you can use OpenAI APIs and then switch to the other. It's they're very, very similar. And tools like Semantic Kernel will help you help you to get there. So 
sorry, there is a lot, a lot of questions here. Carlon supports car landing. Yes, super car landing. Amazing, said Fisher. Thanks. <laughs> it was not as easy and as smooth as I expected. Installing package on the fly is not my idea. But really, really, I if you want to learn more, aki.ms slash Elbruno drones, that's one. And if you please be part of the A skill challenge, you have here the, the link. That's it. It's a pleasure to have you here. We are on time. We have a, one more minute. Oh, more comments here. Let me see if someone else. Uh, can we use the Mini 3 Pro? I don't think so. I know that they have an official SDK, uh, DJI. I haven't tried this with, with other drone. So, but I will say that I don't think so. Have more question. How you can support multiple drones with different move? Hey, you can open different ports to different drones, different threads to different drones and do something like this. I have two drones because initially in live demos, I tried to make both flights. You can you see that it's not happening, it's not working, but hey, that's kind of the idea. Uh, we can also do that if you want. And as I said, I want to be very sensitive with the, with the time. Uh, we are kind of at the end. So thank you very much. See you in the next one. I hope that you are all enjoying the AI Skill Challenge and have a great day. Goodbye.